Hello and welcome back to Chemistry It Is All That Matters and we're going to look at today the gas laws and we're going to talk about the units and conversion factors used in the gas laws and unfortunately there are a lot of different units we can use for pressure, temperature, and volume and so we need to really understand the unit values and how they fit with each of those parts of the gas laws pressure volume and temperature so let's take a look at gas law units now one of the first things we deal with with the gas laws is pressure and we looked at that when we discussed the kinetic molecular theory because the molecules are in motion they are colliding with the surfaces of the container that the gas is housed in and those molecules are also colliding with each other and it is the number of collisions and the number of molecules involved in those collisions that create the pressure that a gas is under. Now, unfortunately, in different sciences, physics versus chemistry, we're going to be dealing with different terms for pressure. So here are five of the possible terms we can use to measure pressure. We have atmospheres which has the unit ATM, kilopascals, uh, kPa, and pascals, Pa, and those are typically used in physics. They are also typically used in aeronautics when you're talking about pressure uh, at a certain altitude. And then we have millimeters of mercury, and that is typically when we're looking at barometric pressure, but we're going to talk about why we're using mercury in just a second and actually millimeters of mercury are referred to as Torcelli's and the reason is because it is Evangelista Torcelli who figured out this measure. Um, we have conversion factors that allow us to convert between each of these units. One atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. One atmosphere also equals 760 millimeters of mercury and 760 millimeters of mercury is also 760 Torcelli's because they are one and the same so one atmosphere also equals 760 Torcelli's and 1000 Pascals is one kilopascal using the metric unit kilo for a thousand so our unit for pressure in chemistry is typically going to be the Torcelli or the millimeter of mercury which we can convert easily to one atmosphere and where we get this unit is from Evangelista Torcelli who figured out that at sea level the pressure of the air at sea level forcing down on the surface of a pool of mercury will actually force that mercury up a one millimeter tube to a height of 760 millimeters of that tube. So that is where we get the measure 760 millimeters of mercury being equal to one atmosphere and that again it was discovered by Evangelista Torcelli at sea level. Now it's good that we use mercury because mercury has such a high density. If we used water the tube would have had to been 14 times higher. So you can imagine a glass tube 14 times 760 millimeters. That would be quite a tall tube. So that is why we use the unit 760 millimeters of mercury because the density of mercury forced down by one atmosphere of pressure will rise in a one millimeter tube to a height of 760 millimeters. Now when we speak of pressure and temperature in gas laws we always use a basic standard and we've talked about this before when we spoke about the mole and how one mole is equal to 22.4 liters at STP standard temperature and pressure and standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius which is converted to Kelvin at 273 and we talked about temperature Celsius and Kelvin conversions early in the first semester 
but they are going to come back now as we talk about temperature and pressure in the gas laws. And standard pressure is that one atmosphere that holds up 760 torcellis, which can be converted to 101.3 kilopascals. So standard temperature and pressure is based on zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. And this will be our standard temperature and pressure as we speak of the gas laws. Now just as we have been doing throughout the entire year, we can use dimensional analysis and conversion factors to convert between various measures. So here we have an example of converting between Tor Torcelli's to atmospheres and again we're starting at 900 Tor and we want to get how many atmospheres that will represent so 900 Tor times the conversion factor of one atmosphere on the top over 760 Torcelli's on the bottom that way we can cancel the Torcelli unit and we get a unit of atmospheres and 900 divided by 760 gives us 1.18 atmospheres. Now attached to your SOFIA tutorial you have a PDF and in that PDF you have these four sample problems to convert so I would invite you to print out that PDF or transfer the PDF into Notability and then turn off the video and solve each of the four and then come back to the video and check your answers. So go ahead and turn off the video now. So 1,000 millimeters of mercury is equal to 1,000 tor. 2.50 atmospheres will convert to 253 kilopascals. 300 kilopascals will convert to 2,250 millimeters of mercury. And 810 tor will convert to 1.06 atmospheres. So hopefully you were able to deal with those conversion factors using dimensional analysis and we can move on to volume now. So for volume, and we've spoke about volume early in the first semester, but just to remind ourselves, we measure things in liters and milliliters when we are dealing with liquids and gases and then when we are dealing with gases and solids we can use decimeters cubed and centimeters cubed so one liter is equal to one decimeter cubed which is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed which is equal to a thousand milliliters and one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter so again on the PDF that is attached to this tutorial you have four sample problems converting various units of volume so go ahead and turn off the video do the four problems and then come back and check your answers so let's see how you did so here we have 2.5 decimeters cubed can be converted to 2.5 liters, which would then be converted to 2,500 milliliters. 6,500 centimeters cubed will give us 6.5 liters. 25 centimeters cubed will give us 25 milliliters. And 7,692 milliliters will give us 6 point, se sorry, 7.692 liters. So hopefully you were able to handle those conversion factors quite easily let's move on to temperature so as a reminder we deal with Celsius in science not Fahrenheit and for the gas laws we are always going to change Celsius to Kelvin we will always work in Kelvin for the gas laws so our conversion equations for Celsius and Fahrenheit 
deal with 9 fifths times Celsius plus 32 will give us Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 ninths will give us Celsius. And remember, Celsius plus 273 is Kelvin, and Kelvin minus 273 is Celsius. So on your PDF that is attached to this tutorial, you have these sample problems converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. So go ahead and turn off the video now and complete those conversions and come back and check your work. So let's see how you did. So 37 degrees Celsius is 98.6 Fahrenheit. 20 degrees Celsius is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 100 degrees Celsius is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 75 degrees Fahrenheit will give us 23.9 degrees Celsius. 110 degrees Fahrenheit is 43.3 degrees Celsius. 50 degrees Fahrenheit is 10 degrees Celsius and here I mixed it up a little bit and you have 120 degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin you will first have to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius then add 273 to get 321.9 Kelvin so here we have the conversions from Celsius to Kelvin we add 273 and from Kelvin to Celsius, we subtract 273. We are reminded that for the gas laws, we always, always, always convert Celsius to Kelvin. So go ahead and find on the PDF where you can convert Celsius to Kelvin. Turn off the video and do the four problems, and then come back and check your work. So let's see how you did. Uh, 20 degrees Celsius will give us 293 Kelvin. 313 Kelvin will give us 40 degrees Celsius. 65 degrees Celsius will give us 338 degrees Kelvin. And 900 Kelvin will give us 627 degrees Celsius. So as you see with the gas laws, we are going to have to recognize units and by recognizing units we will know whether we are dealing with pressure volume or temperature and we need to make sure we can convert between those units as we move through the gas laws so keep working on your chemistry